Hi guys, welcome back. I want to talk to you a little bit more about this particular circuit. It's the same circuit we've been studying for a bit now. But today I want to talk about energy and power. So you may remember that we solved for the four currents in the four different resistors. The 4.3 ohm resistor had a current of 0.69 amps. The 5.6 ohm resistor had a current of 1.44 amps. The current through the 2 ohm resistor was a little weird. It came out negative. And I don't know if we talked very much about that, but that basically means that when I assumed that the current was going to be flowing to the right, and I drew a plus and minus on the resistor consistent with current flow to the right, and then we wrote out Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law for the circuit um, and solved it, we got a negative number for the current. That simply means that my initial guess that the current flows to the right was wrong. No big deal. Um, the math tells me that the actual direction of the current is 0.75 volts. What that means is the actual direction of the voltage drop is actually the other way, too. So the voltage goes, it's higher on the right and lower on the left. The current is flowing from high voltage to low voltage to the left. So that's all that means. <clears throat> and then, of course, we solved for the current in I4 and got 1.05 amps flowing down. If you multiply each of these currents by the corresponding resistance, in other words, you just apply Ohm's law, then you get that the voltage drop through each of these guys is easy to calculate. Um, notice that the voltage drop for the third resistor, the two ohm resistor, is negative. The current is negative. What I want to talk about now is energy. Now remember the definition of electric potential, the definition of voltage, is energy per unit charge. So that means if you've got a 2.94 drop, voltage drop, across that uh, 4.3 ohm resistor, that when a charge, when one kilo of charge flows from the plus end to the minus end, it's losing 2.94 joules of energy, 2.94 joules per kilo of charge. That's what 2.94 volts mean. And now if I ask you how much power is being dissipated in that resistor, how much how much energy per unit time is that resistor absorbing and then releasing in the form of heat? It's going to be 2.94 joules for every coulomb, but it's 0.69 coulombs every second. So it's going to be 2.94 joules times 0.69 per second. So it's 2.94 times 0.69 joules per second. In other words, the Power is the voltage drop times the current. Energy per unit charge times charge per unit time is energy per unit time. Okay, that's the idea. The short story is you simply have to multiply all these currents by the corresponding voltage of each resistor to calculate the power being dissipated in each resistor. So 2.94 times 0.69, 8.06 times 1.44, and so on. Notice that because the voltage and the current in the 2 ohm resistor are both negative, the power is still positive, which means that the thing still dissipates energy. The current is still flowing from high potential to low potential. It just turns out it's in the opposite direction that we initially get. But it's still a passive component. It still absorbs energy. <clears throat> but if you look at the two sources, notice we haven't included those guys yet. In the two sources, the current flows in the opposite direction. Of the potential drop. There's an 11 volt drop across the voltage source, but the current is flowing from 0 up to 11. So it's got a negative power. That means it's sourcing energy. Energy is flowing out of the power source. Same with the current source. It's 1.8 amps against the potential drop. So <clears throat> if you walk down a mountain trail and you see water flowing down the stream, it's going from high potential energy to low potential energy. That's normal. If you see water going from low potential energy to high potential energy, look around and see if you can find a pump or a conveyor belt with, with buckets or something. There's got to be something pushing energy into the system in order for water to go up the hill. The same way with current and the same way with potential. The only way current flows against the potential hill is if there's a power source there, a battery or a, you know something, some kind of an active agent that's pushing charge up against the potential. So in the case of the current source, you got 1.8 amps flowing from 0 volt up to V4, which is 9.56 volts. So it's going to be 
uh, 1.8 amps times 9.56 volts. And then for the 11 volt, you know, you got 11 volts of potential difference, but there's also 0.69 amps of current. So it's going to be 11 times 0.69. So you can write down the current for each of the sources. You can write down the voltage drop for each of the sources. You can multiply those guys together to get the power supplied by both of the sources. And they both turn out to be negative numbers. Now, I neglected to say, if you add up the power dissipated by each of those resistors, you get 24.8 watts. The power introduced into the circuit from the two sources are 17.21 watts for the current source, 7.59 watts for the voltage source. If you add those guys together, then you round to, to two, uh, one decimal place, basically. You also get 24.8 watts, but in this case, it's negative. So you'll notice that I rounded because if you know there's a slight discrepancy, but it's all round off error. So uh, if you if you increase the precision, you'll still get uh, theoretically the same power. It's just that uh, when you carry it out to too many digits, there'll be a difference. But if you can track it down to round off error in the solution. So anyway, the point is the power dissipated by all these resistors is uh, also accounted for by power introduced into the circuit by the two sources. The general rule is, if you forget which way it goes, just think of walking down the mountain. The water always flows naturally from high altitude to low altitude. The current always flows naturally from high voltage to low voltage. And if it does that, the elements that it's flowing through will dissipate that power. But if it's going from low voltage to high voltage, there has to be an active source there sourcing power and then the calculation will produce a negative number. All right. Hope that makes sense. If you guys have questions, bring them to class. We'll do some more problems like this and make sure you're squared away. We'll talk to you soon.